Working with signal data often requires a lot of manipulation. Whether you have a lot of data, the data is stored across many files, or you're storing multiple signals in a single file, getting signal data into a consistent format that is easy to work with can quickly lead to complicated, messy code. In this video, you'll learn how to manage signal data efficiently using a signal data store. If you are new to data stores, check out our How to Use Data Stores video first to learn the basics of what they are and how they work. Now, let's dive into signal data stores. We'll start by creating a signal data store with in-memory data. This is useful when you have signals already in your workspace that you want to process or work with. Here, we've created three different signals and stored them as a cell array in a variable called data. Then, create a signal data store object named SDS that points to the variable containing the data, as well as the sample rate, which we've stored in a variable FS. Now we can easily access and use the data. Let's visualize these signals using the short time Fourier transform, or STFT. To do this, check if the data store has any unread data and, if so, read a signal from it, plot the STFT, and repeat until there are no signals left. Now we have three separate plots for our three different signals. Before we move on to the next example, I'll use CLF to clear the figure handle so that subsequent plots aren't added to this one. Now let's say the data is stored in a folder, and maybe we have so much data that we would run out of memory if we tried to load it all at once. Signal data stores are great for this too. Instead of specifying a variable name, now we specify the folder name and sample rate, and we have a data store. When reading from a signal data store, you can choose to read just the data, or you can also read additional information about the data, such as sample time and file names. Let's read a signal and the information from our data store, and use the p-spectrum function to visualize a spectrogram of the signal. Now, these files contain two signals, but by default, the signal data store only reads the first signal in each file. To read a specific signal other than the first, or to read multiple signals from every file, specify the name of the signals you want to import. For MAT files, these are the variable names, and for CSV files, these are the names stored in the first row. Then you can read and process your data as usual. For more complex file formats and structures, you may want to specify how you want to read the data. You can do this by setting a custom read function. Let's say we want to work with these three files, which all contain different variables. I've created a function called my custom read to specify how I want to read the data from each file. When we attempt to read from the data store, it will call this function instead of the default we've been using. The data store will provide the name of the file it is attempting to read, which I've stored in a variable called file name. My custom read imports all the variables in the file and reorganizes the data so that it will be easier to work with when we read from the data store. It puts all of the signal data in one variable and stores the sample rate in a second variable, then returns them both. If we go back to our code, we can see that when we read from the data store, we are collecting these variables here. Now we can just loop through each of the signals and work with them as usual. Here, I plot the short time Fourier transform for each signal. And there you have it. You now know how to create and use signal data stores in MATLAB to manage large data sets and perform signal analysis efficiently. To learn more about signal data stores, check out the documentation linked in the description. Thank you for watching.